Hello everybody, this is Alex from Hardcoin Guides, being my guide for Dead Space on a possible difficulty. Today we're doing Chapter 6 entitled Environmental Hazard. And this is going to be the one that actually has the first main boss, the first real true boss, unless you count the asteroid section as a boss fight, which would be very reasonable to do, considering the fact that it's such a annoying and difficult section. Um, but yes, this is going to be the first chapter for the first boss, and it's going to be the Leviathan, I believe it's called. And then the other boss, the second one after that, I think is the Slug boss, as it's called, I think. So, uh, if that's even, yeah, that is a thing. Yeah, okay, that is a thing in Dead Space 1. Yeah, we do the turret section again uh, later on, and yeah, I think it is just called the Slug. I don't know. Um, and then after that is just the hive mind itself. Ooh, that hurt pushing that back. Sorry, uh, sometimes like when I move things or when things make certain noises, it really just kind of hurts me, you know? It's it's kind of like that nails on chalkboard thing that people, you know, go on about. But for me, it's, it's very specific stuff that just kind of just, ah, uh, I had to move my monitor back and it made a really annoying noise. Um... So, we're now going to be entering the not medical side of things. I don't know why I keep thinking it's the medical part. We're going to be entering the greenhouse section of the Ishimura. And we're going to have to take down five or six or I forget how many of the Weezers, but you got to go and take them out. And you have to shoot slash melee them to death. And I'm going to be just mostly doing stomps. I'm not going to waste too much ammo. There's one you have to shoot, so there's that. Um, of course, you know, in the later release, they changed it to where you just press X to inject. And in the original release, that was not a thing. So, I know I probably should stop comparing the games at this point, but it's probably just going to happen all the time, no matter what I do. Uh, funny thing, though, is, like, why I didn't do remake or why I'm doing this instead of remake is essentially because I've been wanting to do this for a very long time I've I've really been wanting to do Dead Space 1 for ever since I started this channel actually Dead Space was not the reason why I started the channel I can't exactly particularly point fingers at exactly what it was I'd say Bioshock at most was probably the real one the real contender in God of War um, those two are probably, like, the biggest... Actually, honestly, Dead Space might have been. I don't know. Because Dead Space, to me, is kind of, like, in that same vein of, like, Bioshock, where I actually do enjoy playing through a good campaign of Dead Space, and I feel like it's it's pretty fun to go through, especially on, like, you know, harder settings and stuff. It makes the game much more uh, enjoyable for, you know, some weirdos like me, I guess, <laughs> who enjoy the difficulty levels. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'd say it was probably that and God of War. I don't know about much about Dead Space. I mean, that was... I think that's been on my About Me um, section on my YouTube channel for, like, the longest time was just it. Just this game sitting there, so... I figured, you know, why not take the chance? I'm in the mood for it. Uh, I'll play OG first and then go from there. So, coming up here, uh, normal slasher, nothing special. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that's even a super. I don't know. I think maybe it is. Well, whatever it is, it's a clothed slasher. It's not too hard to take out. I did die. That's why that there's that weird, awkward cut right there. I do die in this room. So the first thing I do is, when I come into this room, is I go straight to my left. And at this point, I have Force Gun. I should be using Force Gun more often than I am, uh, but I'm kind of dumb. And I'll tell you where and when I should be using Force Gun. Here's a pretty good ample place to use it. You know, you got a couple of enemies kind of lined up and kind of grouped up on you. A Force Gun would, would work wonders. And luckily for me, at least I was smart ahead of time and started using the damn thing. And, I, you know, at this point, I already, I already knew from, like, years ago how good this game, this gun was. And it's the same reason why I picked it up again for my actual, you know, re-playthrough of it. Because I remember uh, back in my original Impossible Mode playthrough years ago uh, that I actually did pick up the Force Gun and used it. And I remember it being quite powerful when I kept talking about how good it was and... I'm glad I wasn't wrong, um, especially considering the fact that, like, not only is the Force Gun really good at damage, especially when you start upgrading the damage, and it also has the knockback on it, too, which is nice to have. 
it also doesn't cost too much to buy ammo. It's like 900 credits to buy ammo compared to the 1200 that it is for a plasma cutter shot. So, and for pulse rifle, it's you know, uh, what was it like 1100 for every 25, and then for plasma it's 12, and then for I think force I don't remember how much you get out of a clip. I want to say maybe six. But that might, 900 for that might be kind of weak, honestly, <laughs> now that I think about it. That might actually not be that good when I'm actually comparing the prices here. Um, so yeah, first Weezer, you come in here, and it takes about a few stomps. I don't know why I thought it was going to take just one. I was wrong. It instead takes about, you know, three, four, five, six different kicks just to kill the damn thing. It's better just to stomp them. You can shoot them if you want, but... I'd rather not waste the ammo on something that's kind of just considered somewhat of an NPC anyway, so it's kind of just pointless. But once you take care of that, I think the Pregnant should spawn after you do the Weezer, I believe. If not, then that's fine. Also, you can run into this room for some safety if you need to get away from the Necros for just a, a little while. If you need to, you know, get your bearings back, pretty much, because they do get a little bit crazy when they start, you know, surrounding you and stuff. That's it's a pretty dangerous spot to go, but I go that left way first only because I have force gun and I know for a fact that like you know, with it, uh I can just get myself out of any situation that I might actually get myself into, which is nice to have. So, second one down, easy. Um and let's see. I think yeah, so lurker spawns uh, super slash response. There's of course some explosive barrels around, but as you can see, I run back into this room to kind of just throw them off guard and try to get my bearings back just to get them in a specific way. I, I kind of figured that they'd probably actually spawn in here, but they didn't. Um, but this was mostly to kind of get my bearings to, you know, figure out where I'm going and how I want to, you know, tackle the next uh, situation here, of course, because I don't want to get surrounded at all, really. But if you happen to want to use explosive barrels, that's completely fine. I'm not keeping them for anything specific, so, you know, just wail away as you want. Uh, but do keep in mind that this area is very close encounters. So, explosive barrels are usually better just to be set up rather than thrown, like I'm doing. Um, as, you know, I'm doing as in, like, actually, you know, physically throwing the damn things instead of actually just taking the chance to set them up and actually use them <laughs> appropriately because I'm dumb. So, yeah. Oh, well. We still took out the Lurker and we still took out the Super Slasher and I still have plenty of health and I still have plenty of med kits to kind of uh, last in this situation. Also, something to be prepared for later is going to be a Brute. There's going to be a Brute that comes up um, later on in this section. Also, if you open up this hatch right here, you can find yourself a triple med kit. Uh, you have to stasis it first, of course, but I believe it's a triple. I think it's a high pack. Yes, it is. It's a he high, heavy, whatever the heck it's called. Like, I know there's low, medium, and I I, I want to say the other one's called high, I'm not sure. But anyway, so going up to the next area, and I don't know about you guys, but I always get, like, the most Metroid vibes from this. And I believe Dead Space came out before Metroid Other M, right? If I'm not mistaken. Because I get Other M vibes from that one specific, like, jungle section. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, if you've played Other M or not, but... Uh, that's, that's the vibe I get from this. And I believe since... Because I think Dead Space 1 came out 2008 or 2009. And then Metroid Other M, I think, came out in 2011, maybe. But I don't know. I could be... That could be wrong, because... I mean, could the Wii have been out for that long? I don't know. I'd have to go get up and go get my copies. I mean, if anything, like, I mean, I could just, I could just look it up. But, um, next Weezer, so yeah, after that, uh, you're gonna have a couple infectors spawn. They're gonna spawn from the, the door you basically just came into. So, make sure as soon as they spawn, you use stasis, or at least, you know, have your explosive barrel equipped. And just launch it right at them, you know. No prejudice, or full prejudice, or whatever the term is for it. But basically, just go full out and just wipe the hell you know, wipe the floor with them. And then after that, you know, we're going to go into the next room, of course, and I'm trying to think of um, who's all next. Uh, we got some zero gravity situations. Also, I was wrong about the stores. 
Uh, this was the chapter I was talking about with like the uh, the amount of stores that appear, and I think I might be wrong. Actually, I think I might have been mistaken. Um, anyway, so we're gonna have I forget what these things are called. They're not called pods. Let's just call them exploders. Let's just call them that, just to be on the safe side. So the explody guys, uh, you shoot them in the, you know, the hand, and they blow up. And when they blow up, you sometimes get items out of them, sometimes don't. Sometimes you have to actually, like, stomp them to get it out of them or whatever. Um, no, that's that's the wrong death space. <laughs> Never mind, I'm thinking of the wrong one again, goddammit. Um, no, ignore what I just said. Something to keep in mind, though, is in the remake, you have to stomp them. You, you know, that's something that I kind of forgot that you had to do. Don't stomp the explosive part of the body, but do stomp the actual regular body itself. Or blow it up or whatever. That way you can get the item out of it. Because I'm getting the, the games mixed up again. So, upon clearing that, which is not too hard, you just, you know, shoot their hands. Easy. Uh, you're going to release the hatch, and there's going to be two lurkers that are going to spawn. And luckily we have stamina, or I mean stasis uh, pod... We have a stasis module thing near us, so wasting stasis is not a big deal. You know, if you want to use ammo, go ahead. If you want to stomp them out or use melee, go ahead. You know, whatever your whatever your options are. If you're if you're really low on ammo, I would suggest just maybe going for the stomps instead, because we're gonna get to a point where the Leviathan is gonna appear, and that's gonna be a nightmare. So this entire chapter, I would suggest trying to save up as much of your main gun ammo as you possibly can and not waste too much of it you know have a secondary on hand or at the very least save up at least 10,000 credits or you know at least 5,000 and then maybe like an extra you know five on top of that just just for insurance just to make sure that you're safe what is wrong with me why am I yawning all of a sudden but actually, hold on, I do have to clear my throat for a second, so I'm going to mute the mic real quick. Okay, sorry about that. I, I, I hate having to do that, but it's just a thing I have to do. Uh, so, anyway, uh, self-explanatory, you know, pretty much just more lurkers spawn, you kill them. I think there might have been a leaper, I wasn't paying attention. I had to look away for a second, but, um, yeah, so, pretty much just, you know, zero gravity your way through here. You get some explosives down here that you can carry with you. So, if you really need to use something that needs to save on ammo, then go right ahead, of course. And, I try bringing it with me, I give up. Yeah, I'm kind of quick to give up. Also, I believe you can aim in and then also open doors while you aim in. I might be mistaken, but I think that is a thing you can do in Dead Space 1, at the very least. I could be wrong, because it's been a bit since I actually tested out that theory, but I feel like that's something that you can do. Also, this next section, I would recommend not wasting ammo on shooting these. It might be enticing to do that, but I wouldn't recommend doing it. But this next area is a little bit annoying. Yeah, I say that, but yet I shoot the fucking first one. Wow, what do you know? Uh, the reason why I don't recommend shooting ammo is because, like, there's really no point to doing it. Not only do you have an explosive barrel right there you could throw at the thing, but you have just enough time to kind of run in and just melee it. So, make sure you have stamina, though. Uh, you have stasis, sorry. You want to stasis the first enemy after you open this door because he's going to grab you and, and he might grab you or he might hit you, one of the two. It doesn't matter what he does. He's, he's just going to be an asshole. So you're better off just stasis, using stasis on him. Because you should have a full charge by now. And if you don't, I recommend at least having a full charge. Um, that way, you know, you can get out of the fire, you know, much quicker. You have plenty of time to kind of like melee the, the door locks. You have time to do that. It's just that the, the slasher himself will either A, grab you, or B, knock you back, and that could set you back a couple of seconds, and that would not be good. Now, you can lure him into the fire room to burn him alive. I wouldn't recommend doing that, mainly because it you just, you'd just you have to get around him, or you'd have to let him in the door, and then you'd have to like go through the door, 
and it's just too much of a setup. So honestly, in my opinion, using stasis is your best option. Uh, force gun could work too. You can just blast them right then and there. If you don't have stasis and you have force gun, then use that. But I wouldn't recommend using any other type of gun that takes too much time to kind of just knock him back. Granted, to be fair, a quick shot with the plasma cutter does have a stun effect. So you could theoretically maybe shoot him while he, you know, while the door does open to maybe get a small stun in. But, you know, those few seconds could be pivotal. Uh, and same thing with the force gun, too, is like, you know, using a force gun would still take time to shoot the damn thing to actually knock him on his ass. So, that's time I'd rather just not waste using and just get the hell out of there. That's kind of the idea. Wow, I didn't know my, uh, commentary would make good elevator music. I should have cut this part out, but I didn't think about doing that. I did see it, but I thought, ah, it would be that long, but I didn't realize it actually was going to be that long. Alright, so once again, um, I believe we're in a different area now, actually. Uh, a couple lurkers are going to spawn, and then, of course, a preg is going to be, like, right behind you. So, I think, I think preg that spawns to the left of us? I believe so. Also, later on in the game, at the very end game, uh, pregnants will actually be spawned in with lurkers inside of their bellies instead of swarmers. Which, to be fair, I'd rather just deal with lurkers because they're way easier to handle than swarmers. And plus I get, you know, money and I get all kinds of things out of them. So it's really kind of just nice just to have that if you really need it, if you need it bad. But that's like end game stuff. That's like, you know, at the chapter 11, chapter 12 type situation. So, that takes care of that area. I think, we, yeah, we're back into the the first area. I thought we had more Weezers to go take out. I believe we do, but... We might have already done everything we need to. I don't know. Maybe we're getting mi things mixed up. Hmm. I don't know. Also, watch out for these things. I mean, that should be pretty apparent anyway. But do be careful about these little shooty, you know, gas, uh, liquid, whatever the hell. I don't know what they're spitting out exactly. Um, I think it's like weed killer stuff or something. Whatever it is, it's spitting out enough stuff to kind of hurt Isaac, so I wouldn't recommend, you know, touching it, because it does a lot of damage. I mean, that should go without saying, I know, but at the same time, you know, I want to warn people, like, hey, this thing does hurt a lot. I wouldn't recommend touching it. So I decided to upgrade damage on my force gun. That's what that upgrade was. If that was, you know, kind of quick, because... I do kind of flop through the menus a little bit too fast sometimes, but it's mainly just because I've done it so much, and I kind of forget to kind of slow down and let people, you know, see what I'm doing. That's just my own dumb habits, so. And you know what they say, you know, old habits die hard or whatever it is. Alright, what am I getting now? Let's see. Well, first I'm going to sell some stuff. Uh... I got nothing to sell, I guess, so that's not going to happen. I forget what I buy. I think I buy ammo. Okay, I buy a node. Well, at some point... At some point, I buy ammo. So I buy a node. And I still have like 9,000 credits left over, so I'm pretty much in the safe zone. This is around the time when I would recommend saving up for like that 10,000 or 5,000. Mainly, I'd say 10,000 at the best. Just because I feel like that's the more safer option. Uh, once you come in here, there's going to be a guardian on the, on the other end. And something I wasn't doing, and I should have been doing, is using the force gun secondary grenade launcher shot to take out the arms. But like a complete imbecile, I decided to go with the old-fashioned way of using plasma cutter ammo to do it. And if you don't have force gun, then, you know, other guns might be liable. Contact beam? Probably not. Uh, pulse rifle? No. Uh, the ripper? Maybe? I don't know. I mean, Flamethrower, possibly. I'd have to test that one out, too, again. But for the most part, since I'm running Force Gun, I do, I do know that, you know, that can happen. Also, he didn't really, like, make me jump, but he did kind of catch me off guard when I did play it. I'm like, what the f I'm like, what the hell? What are you doing in here? So I might have gotten a little bit startled <laughs> seeing that there was a guy there. Not, like, complete jump scared, but, you know, just enough to get me like, ah, what the hell? I didn't expect you there. So, that might have gotten me, uh... Death Space might have actually gotten me again. And again, I'm not trying to sound like a badass. It's just like, you play this game enough, trust me, you... None of these little bastards are going to scare you anymore. 
that's just the nature of it. Because the game just never has opportunities where they really do that. You know, a lot of the time, like if if an enemy is a, if, if the enemies are in the room, you'll damn well know. They'll, they'll you'll know where they're at. You know, you'll know that they're coming, and you're pretty much beefed up with your guns at this point. That being able to fight back just makes you not as frightened. At least in my opinion. I mean, I don't, I can't speak for others. I'm just saying that. Yeah, I'm I'm no Billy badass. I'm just. I played a lot of Dead Space. Okay, you just get used to it. Same thing with Bioshock. You just get used to it. Now, if I was playing an actual scary game, like, you know, one that realistically tried to be, like, super scary, then, yeah, I, I'd piss my pants, because that's just how I am. Um, and anyway, so, Brute coming in, of course, we do what we do all the time, and that is, you know, shoot him from the front, use stasis, and I think there's no stasis modules around, so I do have stasis on hand. If you don't, that's fine, because you can just shoot him from the front, and then eventually he should um, defense curl. You still want to hit him in the in the yellow. And then what makes this area a bit difficult is the navigation. Cause like this entire room has like a ton of walls and stuff inside of it, and that makes it much more harder to kind of like get around to get behind him. And on top of that, it makes it kind of harder for him too. So it kind of works out in that way. Also, I know I should just drop it by now, but, like, I'm, I'm, I've thought, I'm still talking about the horror stuff, like, I like horror games, I'm just saying, like, yeah, I know, I, I don't, I'm not trying to sound cool, I promise, don't take it that way, it's just, Dead Space is not that scary, man, I'm sorry, I'm just sorry, I don't think it's ever really, truly been that scary, maybe a bit startling here and there, but, like I said, they never really have moments where they really try to startle you. Because, generally speaking, like, you can see them from, like, a mile away. You can hear them coming from the vents. You know, you hear the music go off. It's, like, it's pretty damn obvious. Except for, like, that one door with that, you know, necro inside of it. Like, that could be a scare. I could see that. Yeah. <laughs> but speaking of other horror games I recommend, there's the Dread X... Dread X collection. I have that on Steam. It's pretty neat. It has like a bunch of like different kind of cool style of games. And that's the type of horror games I like. The ones that don't need to scare you all the time, but the ones that just kind of have like a horror presence to them, I kind of like. Um, I don't mind having games do scare me. I used to be terrified of playing the house back in the day. If you guys remember that Flash game. Yeah, that one scared the living shit out of me as a kid. Um, same thing with Ex Mortis. I remember those terrified me. Like, the idea of just being somewhere dark and not knowing what the hell is coming around the corner. And then seeing those, like, semi-realistic, hyper-realistic, you know, scares and stuff kind of just spooked me. <laughs> and to a point, you know, even nowadays I'd probably still get scared shitless of them. But other horror games I recommend, I mean, I, I, did, I did play the FNAF series for a bit. Um, at least up until 4, I kind of just... I mean, I have played Sister Location, but eh, it was alright, I guess. I, I don't, I've not played Security Breach, and I have no real reason to kind of want to do it. No full interest. Just because it just doesn't look like my type. It doesn't look like my type of game, honestly. And usually I'm, I'm the type of guy that's like a stickler for wanting people to, you know, play a game before they judge it. And I'm not judging the game because I've not played it. I'm just saying that, like, I'm not that interested in the FNAF series that much anymore and I don't care enough to go out of my way to spend 60 bucks to play a damn game that could potentially be broken. You know, so I'm not, yeah, let's just drop that topic, I guess. <laughs> I got into a heated, you know, debate about games and how people should be able to judge a game and what have you. Because, like, I personally feel like you shouldn't judge a book by its cover until you at least play it. You know what I mean? But at the same time, there's so much stuff on the internet to show you what a game is like that realistically makes it much more easier to kind of judge before you get to play, but I don't know. So, anyway, ignoring that, uh, I forget what these things are called. 
I think they're just called tentacles. Probably, I think. Now, granted, a speedrun strat you could do is just let the thing drag you, like, close to the end before you die, but I still wouldn't recommend doing it. I have no proper pro tips for how to deal with these damn things, besides just shoot in the general direction. And, 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 and just, you're gonna have to get good at shooting it. But, granted, you know, at this point, if you've already gone through Dead Space on Hard or whatever, you probably already dealt with this by now. You'd have to beat the game once to get impossible mode to unlock. Unless there was a cheat code. If there was, you know, I'd love to know about that, because, uh... Yeah, that would have been nice to have that, but I still would have missed out on getting the achievement. So, you know, no harm, no foul. Alright, but, um... Once again... Zero gravity section. These are just kind of annoying, and I eventually get lost and, and stuck dealing with them. Lurkers are going to spawn. Uh, I think maybe a leaper spawns. A couple of lurkers seem to spawn. At least they get close to each other, so I can just, you know, not have to search around the entire damn vicinity to kind of find one. It's really irritating when that happens. But you can, for the most part, figure your way out. Yeah, you can turn that off. That's actually pretty nifty to have, honestly. In case anybody didn't know that you could do that, yes, you could. Which is very nice. I don't want anybody to be like me and then go through like a playthrough and then wonder like why the hell, you know, hide the stasis the damn thing and be like, well, that's because there you go. Yes, because I would make that mistake, and I'm I'm trying to save people from making a possible same mistake. Which is very weird because then the fact again that we're doing an impossible mode guide. And we're not doing just like a how to play Dead Space fully guide, so I don't know. That's usually how I end up treating my guides anyway, is I accidentally always treat them like... Not just hard mode guides, but how to play the game guides too. And I think that's just the, the, the infection that I've had from doing, you know, Let's Plays and stuff. Is because a lot of the time, I like to cater to the wanting to be um, like an informational type let's play channel where like you know I know what I'm doing and I want to show you how to do this specific part rather than just play the game for fun which I still had fun you know with a lot of the games I did play it's just sometimes you know it could take a potential backseat also I'm just gonna fast forward the rest of this section because it just gets long and you know elongated and then boring and it takes me forever to walk back through all this this muck so why bother showing you all that? My computer's gonna explode. Because I just happened to fast forward like a few seconds, but... They'll calm down in a minute or two. But yeah, uh... Originally, you know, I had... Um... My Let's Play channel. Just ignore what I'm doing. I don't know why I'm doing this. It's kind of pointless. I don't think I even use any of them anyway. Um... I was inspired by a long time ago... To do a Let's Play channel by, you know, Chugga Conroy, if those of you might know that name, might sound familiar. He is a... I, I don't know if you call him really famous. I don't know how famous he is or how many subs he has or really whatever. I don't watch him. Uh, but at the time when I was young, back in high school, you know, or whatever the hell it was. I kind of saw his channel as like a really cool... Okay, you know what? This actually did come in handy. But I saw like his way of doing Let's Plays really cool and I wanted to do it myself. That's pretty much that um yeah i guess putting those explosive barrels and just dropping it down here was kind of a smart idea but yeah what i'm doing is a bit dorky looking but it kind of works using the door to my advantage i can just kind of just cheese out the enemies and make them not despawn but kind of just go back to their old position and just kind of get screwed basically just mess with the ai and make them you know force them back into their their regular position that they wore in before and then use that to my advantage to make them further back. Just kind of a fun way to kind of dork around with them. But yeah, um, Chugga was, like the way he did his Let's Plays were very informal and he always had a, a knack for making it um, 
known that he was going to be like a 100% type guy. And I guess that kind of resonated with me back then was like, huh, you know, that sounds cool. I should do the same thing. Actually, hang on real quick. Okay, there we go. Um, sorry, I had to, another cough come up. You talk for like 40, you know, 50 minutes, it starts to kind of hurt your throat a bit, and you got to take a sip of something, so. Um, anyway, yeah. Basically, the way he did Let's Plays was neat at the time, and I kind of took that into my own approach, and then became, well, Turd Monkey on YouTube. But on top of that, as well... I mean, I did other stuff before that, of course. I'm just talking about, like, my Let's Play side of my channel. Because I did do other videos beforehand. They were very dumb and bad. But, you know, that's every YouTube channel back then. Especially when you're a kid. Uh, yeah, and then... Hardcoreian started back in, like, 2015. And I want to say the reason why I did it... Was mainly because I wanted to prove that I could do it. You know, that I could beat these games. And that I could do them. And I have a way to archive... And then on top of that, also be able to carry over the same thing that I do with my Let's Play channel where I kind of just give information about how to beat a game, you know. And so, realistically, a lot of Hardcorean is kind of built up on a foundation of tons of different things. You know, my YouTube knowledge, uh, my editing skills, which are... Not the greatest, but yeah, I can get things done, I guess. And then on top of that, you know, knowing how to beat a game and learning how to beat a game and being able to show off that, hey, I can do it. And not only that, I can do it, but I can help you do it. And then there's also another layer on top of that where I kind of just enjoy doing them. And then alongside that, I... I really hope that people do enjoy them themselves. I do hope that there's at least some entertainment to these in some way, shape, or form. Whether it be just watching me play it or watching me talk about it. Whatever the case, I kind of hope that in some way, shape, or form I can resonate that entertainment value in some way. Because I don't... Not, like, trying to, like, you know toot my own horn or whatever, but I do feel like I've been on YouTube long enough to kind of understand how the YouTube way works, uh, sort of. I mean, I don't take full advantage of every situation, but at the same time, like, I kind of understand how, like, commentary works and what kind of commentary people might like, and then kind of just adapt that into my own thing and then put my own sort of spin. It's not that unique, I guess, but... Because, realistically speaking, it's just a guy talking into a mic about a game that came out, like, 10, 20 years ago, but uh, it works. Uh, so, here here we go. It's guy time. Uh, Leviathan fight. And there's going to be a lot of things around you. I did go back and I bought ammo. Mainly because I ran out of ammo in this fight. Um, so, quick trick is whenever the arm slams itself down, you're going to want to zero gravity to the other side. You're going to want to zero gravity above you. That's the trick. I would also recommend going with Plasma Cutter just because that's good accuracy and just relatively good decent damage at this point. And the Explosive Barrels, I don't think they technically do much damage and I have a hard time hitting them anyway, so if you know how to use Explosive Barrels in this fight, then yeah, go for it. But for me personally, I don't. Also, see how I'm strafing around like left and right? I'm doing that to kind of get a advantage point on the arms, so that way they don't hit me. And something else to kind of keep in mind. I know this sounds very obvious, but you really, really don't want to waste too much ammo. Even though I just wasted almost an entire clip. But you really don't want to waste all of your ammo at all. You, you really want to make sure all of your shots at least hit, because... This fight is very, very ammo consumption heavy, and it will just tear you down with ammo if you didn't buy any beforehand, or you didn't have any beforehand, or whatever the case. And that's something to kind of be careful of. But once you start getting him into, like, Phase 2 and Phase 3, the ammo consumption starts to kind of go down a bit. It becomes a little bit easier to kind of take care of. It's mostly just these damn arms. 
in the first part of this fight that really become kind of difficult. So, yeah, that's that's something to look out for. If you know he's going to slam, and he has a very obvious... No, not really super obvious, but there's an indicator. I should say that. There's an indicator of whether or not he's going to shoot you down or not. So, you see these things that he's shooting out of his mouth? Um, you can grab these and shoot them at each other, these rocks. Or, if you know how many rocks he's shooting out, then you could actually, you know, throw the rock back, essentially. Um, shooting the rocks just kind of stops it in place and makes it to where another rock will spawn and then break that other rock. And like I said, if you know how many rocks are going to spawn, then you can kind of use that to your advantage to either just throw it against it or throw it against each other. And I'm just taking some pop shots, you know, right at the enemy. Sorry, my right ear just went out all of a sudden. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know why am I always dying. But, yeah, this is pretty much most of the fight. Is you just want to either shoot the rocks to stop them or grab them. I recommend grab them if you don't have the ammo to take care of it. I had the ammo. I didn't care enough. I'm like, eh, I got plenty. It's fine, whatever. Because once he opens up his mouth for the second phase... Or its mouth, or whatever it is. That's when the fight becomes just a tad bit easier. Now I'm starting to run out of ammo, I think. Even though he has arms that are spawned around, he still, as long as you you know keep on shooting that mouth, it shouldn't do much to you. Eventually, we're gonna get to phase three, where, if I'm not mistaken, I think he starts to cut the air off, but it doesn't last long enough anyway. Unless I'm thinking of, of course, the remake. I'm probably thinking of that again. Alright, I'm going to cut again. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I just keep... It, it's like I got like a chip or something in my throat. It's bothering me. It's pissing me off. But, yeah, so... Just keep at it. You know, the arms are not going to do much at this part if you just keep shooting at the mouth. And... Typically, when it screams, you can shoot if you get a good angle on it. You can get a shot off, and then once it's starting to shoot balls again, um, you can shoot it again. But yeah, wait to see, like, an opening. Take a pop shot. Take another pop shot. Um, and then if you want, you can shoot a rock, or you can grab it. You don't even have to throw it back. You can just grab it. And that still works wonders to be able to, um, you know, stop the rock from hitting you. So, yeah. Take it on again. God damn, I didn't realize that doing two videos worth of commentary today were going to kill my throat, man. <laughs> I'm so sorry for the, the scuffed commentary that I try so hard to be professional with, but I can't. Because uh, my throat just wants to kill me today. It's not even like a mucus problem either. It's just... Uh, I don't know. I think I've just been doing too much talking. And it's starting to relapse on me here. So, yeah. I don't know how other, other ways I can possibly explain this fight any better than have a ton of ammo. Just make sure you are prepared for this fight. And you have plenty of ammo to do this fight on. Because it... It's such an ammo consumption heavy section. It's ridiculous. And you saw how much I wasted on there. And I still had force gun ammo left. Yeah, but eventually I would have ran out. And if you do run out, you can use the rocks that the Leviathan does spawn out of its mouth to throw them back and make it to where, you know, you could throw it back and hit him right in his weak spot, thus doing some decent damage. It does okay damage. I think it does maybe about the same as a plasma does. That I'm not 100% sure on, but I would assume. I would assume that would be the case. So, after that's all said and done, I'm just going to waste the rest of whatever credits I got, or might have had, and just buy a ton of ammo. Because I wasted so much ammo trying to fight the damn thing back. That I decided to buy... It back again, of course. Sorry, brain. <laughs> Not working. Um, 
That was a very long fight. That's a very arduous fight, too. And again, it's just... It's all about having just enough ammo. Because the damage situation is not a big deal. The fight itself is not that hard. It's just fairly annoying with how much ammo you need to go through. But yeah, after this video, I think I should just stop recording for like a, a day or so, maybe. I don't know. I want to get these out as fast as I can... You know, because I really want to get to the next guy, too, and just have Dead Space, you know, done. And because it's been done for a couple weeks now, but it is what it is. So, anyway, guys, I'll see y'all later, and I'm going to go take care of myself, I guess. So, yeah, take care, everybody.